This is a Taylor water brake dynamometer, uh, originally built in the early 60s. It was built for tractors and uh, mainly 540 RPM output shaft tractors. Because you see this big housing here had a great big gear driving a small gear. And if you did the math on it, that actually turned this shaft in the center of the dyno, the actual dyno itself, 2000 RPM. Which is pretty much right the wheelhouse that we want 1000 to 2000 RPM to check our Model T engines with. So we uh, got rid of the gearbox. The housing's still there because we needed the bearing to pivot this on. The dynamometer is, uh, well, like I said, a water brake. It, and we start out with the dyno clear full of water. It's an impeller that's got grooves cut in it and it's trying to throw that water out onto the two stators on each side of the impeller and the more water that's in there the harder it is to do and we get more torque recorded in our hydraulic cylinder right here which happens to be exactly 12 inches from the center of the shaft out to that cylinder that we're measuring torque so there's foot and then we're measuring pounds of force so that's foot pounds of torque which is torque foot pounds of torque times rpm equals divided i mean yeah divided by 5252 5252 equals horsepower so if we've got a good accurate torque reading good accurate rpm reading and then do the math and we know the horsepower the chain coupling was uh, just an industrial strength chain coupling that we came up with double chain that we can run up to I think they said 60 thousandths out of alignment and it's still pretty happy. We strive to get it much closer than that. But we couple the, the Model T directly, engine RPM right straight through the dynamometer. Mike and I came up with this idea. We just use a <clears throat> old Chevy 454 flywheel that we picked up for free somewhere. Bolted it on here and put a Chevy 454 starter on it and that way if we want to test an engine, say 1915 Model T engine that didn't even have a starter, we still don't have to struggle and bear over it because we're getting older every day. Speak for yourself. <laughs> so we came up with a starter that works on whatever Model T engine we put in there. We uh, have it kind of protected. It's a work in progress. We're uh, not near as far along as we wanted to be at this point in the game, but this is where we're at. We, uh, like I said, we start out with the water clear full. There's just as much water in that dyno as we can get in it. So the engine starts out under load. We're kind of starting in the steepest part of the hill, if it was in a Model T. And then we just shut the water supply off, but we have restricted the outlet to a 1 16th of an inch orifice. And we wanted to use an orifice rather than some kind of a needle valve so that the water always drains out at the same rate every time. So we kind of get some repeatability into our tests. And this takes almost three minutes to run from fully loaded to 2,000 RPM where it's pretty much unloaded. <clears throat> Data acquisition has been what has kicked us in the butt since this project, project's inception. We first started out with just a regular set of scales, but they were digital. I mean, they were highly accurate, did tenths of a pound scales, and then just a RPM tack pickup off of a timing light just to prove whether the dynamometer would work or wouldn't work, do what we wanted it to do. We decided it would, only now we needed a better way of collecting the data. So Innovate is what we're using right now, Innovate software, and its sample rate is 12 times per second. It looks at the torque and the RPM and sometimes oxygen in the exhaust. <coughs> the, uh, like I said, the main purpose of this is torque times RPM divided by 5252 is our horsepower. So we know what it is. Mainly what we're interested in is the torque number. If we do something to improve the Model T and we can get 100 pounds of torque at 1,200 RPM rather than 90 pounds of torque, we've improved it 10%. And we know that and we're pretty happy with that. We're gonna, we have the engine running. The throttle is wide open as I speak. The water valve is all the way open so the dynamometer is full of water as you can see. And now's the point where we shut the water valve off 
and let it drain out at that fixed rate. Valve shut off, we start recording. Open up the vent valve to let water into the center of the dynamometer. We should start gaining RPM.